Well, it's working at the Totally Awesome Fishing Show down here in deepest Somerset. Going to have a go trying to catch a pike on lures. It's not winter yet, it's just coming into autumn. Just a hunch, I'm at this sluice area. As you can see, as uh, water's going over the top, we've had a little bit of rain. There's a giant sluice bit that drains all the land that surrounds here. We've got a major amount of work going over there. I guess they're repairing something over there. So you can see there's a bit of marginal weed there along this drain. I'll probably have a throw up here. I did fish you before. There's not a great deal of pull on the water there, if you can see down there. Um, and the guy said, you know, try below the sluice. And you can see there, it's certainly fishable. So I'm going to have a throw around here and work my way back down there where the sort of pinch point is. Um, I can't remember the state of tide because this does get affected by the tide here. So I can't for the life of me remember how I called before, what state tide it was. I'm not going to catch anything walking across the road, so we'll give it a go. I'm going to take an umbrella with, with me as well, just in case. So I'm uh, fishing with lures. No bait, just lures here. I can see now I've got my uh, polarising glasses on, see sort of not through the water, but I can see I'm going to snag up. I want a sort of mid-range lure, the lure I'm using is the old green barramundi lure there, well chewed, well battered, wire trace and the rod is the trusty 2.40 metre kanji casting weight 40 to 80 grams, it means nothing to me as you guys well know, this one is going to sink too deep so I'm probably going to go for a mid-range one but I've got to throw this out because it's lucky, isn't it? It's lucky. I think the tide's dropping, I'm not sure, but we'll have a throw. Hopefully I don't snag it. The reel is one of these uh, Gearshift 4000 FRs, it's called. I mean, up here by the sluice, it might be a bit, little bit deeper. I don't need weed here. I've got weed on the hook straight away. He did mention about weed in the tackle shop, in the talk and angling tackle shop. Let's give it a go. <clears throat> now before when I came I could see small fish dimpling. But of course different time of year, well, it's a year later, over a year later. This is a floating plug so if I stop retrieving the plug actually rises to the surface. Got to be a few. What I'm going to do is have a few casts with this, and then I'm going to uh, move down. And I, ha I had a sort of banana-shaped plug there that I seem to remember catching on before. But listen, every time you go lure fishing, it's always different. And apparently, this does get hammered all around this loose area, so. I'm looking for one, two, three fish, something like that. Jacks, I don't, I don't care, I don't mind what they are. They get perch in here as well. I've got a feeling that's dropping that water. Might be good, might be not, who knows. I'm gonna give it five hours, something like that. Till my wrist and my poor old arthritic wrist with the reel handle gives out. And I'm on mono, not braid, I'm on 15 pound uh, mono. Right, a couple more casts and I'm going to change lures. So there's uh, sort of limited swims along here, you can fish anywhere pushing through the nettles. As you can see just down here, there was a bit of a run and I have seen some fry just jumping down there. Only, only little things like this, you know, really, really small. But uh, I'm going to have a run through with the lure I've got. And as you can see there, looks like it's a bit slippery. You're going to have to watch the bottom end of it. But I figure it's worth a throw. Of course, people ask. I want to slip there, Graham. How long is my lead? They ask, is it snaggy? And the answer to that is, I do not know. But obviously, being a drainage area, or while there's no trees are really on the banks, it's all pretty clear to let the water go down fast in this part of Somerset where it uh, presumably does flood, well it does flood, uh, then um, I would say it's minimal, more likely to get weed, but there could have been the odd 
branch or a bit of rubbish that's got washed down and below the sluice they release it obviously because they come down to to check the sluices there's a salmon ladder up there I'll show you that later on I've been washing it in case there's any salmon jumping up it but I would imagine there's something of a rarity in this neck of the woods so I'm just going to jig this lure quite slowly I don't think it's very deep at all there and this might be a match fished area and has had a cane literally this last Sunday I'm coming on a Tuesday I rarely if I can help it fish a weekend Saturday or Sunday there's too many people fishing makes it tough Mondays I don't like fishing because the same sort of reason it's been hammered at the weekend so I find Monday can be a bit of a, a tough day as well best ones Wednesdays a lot of older people come out midweek for a break on a Wednesday makes it busy I find Thursdays Tuesdays and Thursdays I find obviously providing you can get the time off are uh, possibly better days midweek a little bit quieter and I feel the fish have been fed do you know what I mean they've been fed on the uh, weekend and by the anglers I think the day after it um, it possibly is a bit tough they've either been fed or they've been hammered I don't know what they're doing over there they've got a massive bulldozer going up and down they've got it all fenced off here I've got a guess to stop people walking in there so I'm fishing fairly slow. No flashes or bumps or anything. I'm watching the grade on the side of the um, banks here and this seems as though there's no real overhangs or drop offs or anything like that. It's fairly sort of smooth like this coming up uh, smooth either. Where's the lead gone? Either side. Right guys, I'm going to work away and if I do get a hit and hook up, I'll get back to you. Well, these are obviously worn swims, you know what I mean? You can see they're, they're worn, but it does seem very slightly deeper there. And there's one or two real tiny dimples. Whether to change lures, because there's a new swim, or should I go through this whole stretch with the same lure get down the bottom and then come back and go to a different lure. I'm not really one to change lures, it's more the action of the lure I want. I figure regardless of colour, even if it's your favourite, if it's got a good action to it, that's the one to stick with. Let's have a throw here. Just looks a little tad deeper. I think I might be at the wrong time. I think this, the, the sort of tide's dropping. You get this on the Dorset Stour, down the bottom end of the tidal stretch, you know. I always forget, is it good when the tide's down or is it good when the tide's up? They do say for the roach and that, the tide comes up, um, the salt water pushes the bait fish up, the roach and stuff like that, and then the pipe follow them up as well. And as the tide recedes so more fresh water goes down the river they tend to drop back I don't know I don't live there somebody tell us on rivers that are tidal does the salt content push the fish up I'm pretty sure it does so possibly high tide would be a good time to fish this but then you think with low tide you've got more chance of your lure going in front of a fish you know because they're dropping into say deeper pockets the old fishing keeps you going, doesn't it? Keeps you, keeps your brain going, thinking, thinking, thinking. It looks the sort of water would take a spinner. Hmm. Well, no fish at all. I've changed over and been working this spinner bait here. It's just a big single barbless hook there. I thought maybe the vibration, you know, might uh, pull them up. I think it's a tidal thing, I don't know, but I haven't seen many moving. I've gone round the odd feature here. There's another bush down there, going to try that. I don't know whether to walk really miles and see if I can find something on my theory that they've dropped back with the uh, tide ebbing. I don't know. The thing is, if I go above the sluice, 
where previously I've been, I've only fished here once before, I didn't do any good at all. I think maybe I had one little jack, you know. Above the sluice, it won't be affected by the tide. So maybe, maybe it's more constant up there, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna have a good old go down there, have a walk down, keep chucking this spinner bait around what little features there are. I found the plug I caught on uh, a year or two, two years back. And uh, then I think I'll go and have some lunch and go and work up the top end. And failing that, throw myself off that sluice. It's a tough one. See, the thing is, I'm not really a lover of straight, narrow, featureless waterways like canals. I'm not a sort of canal. Now, I know this is a river, but for me, come and say Hampshire Raven, Dorset Stour, you're looking for features, aren't you? This is what I'm used to, this type of thing. A feature there, dropping a sprat or a tiny dead bait down either side, front or back, and just twitching it around the front of that. That's what I would be doing all the time. I'm happy doing that all day long. But when you get this lovely countryside, look, there's no housing estates, it's lovely. But it seems like there's nothing here. There's no, there's no people. It feels like I'm the last person on the planet. I've got nothing to eat. It's all in the car. It is almost, look, it's a, it's a grey, horrible day, really. It's not raining, so it's not too bad. I find it sort of, it's a bit depressing, isn't it? When, you, when you've got all this landscape like this, big, huge, massive, flat area, and no features in the river. Let's have a go down here. One fish, one take. That's all it takes, one take to turn it around. Guys, I'm on. I've lost two. I've changed plugs. How on earth am I going to get this one out? It's beyond belief. But I'm on a pike. It might be the same one that came up on my spinner bait. Here he is. He's on a sort of blue shad. Just about to shake the hook. I'm going to drop the microphone, guys. See if I can get down and get this one for you. At least get it out. Got him. Maybe moving downstream to the trick. I'll have a few more casts with the lure. I lost two or the same fish on a spinner bait. The hook's too big, the big single. Let's get this guy back and I'll show you what the lure was. Just so nice to get that first fish out of the way. Some form of shad. Now look, you can see it got a funny little vein to it but I wanted something that goes down but not too deep and the blue cover color might be something to do with the blue of the roach who knows he ate it that's the main thing you might have actually seen the trials and tribulations I got into trying to net that fish and that's with it extended but I'll tell you how steep the banks are people right 
that probably there would be, I'm going to say, from the bottom of the water up that bank is just over two people high. So that's maybe 12 feet high. You can imagine the water 12 feet deep rolling through. Well, don't imagine it. That's what happens when it floods. It washes straight over here. I'm going to pull these old nettles back. Look, it goes through, it goes to this level there. From this post, ouch. Okay, have some of that. <laughs> that was really stupid one. <laughs> ouch, ouch, ouch. We all got to get back. It's like stubbing your toe on a bed, isn't it? What do you do? You go, come on then, come on. You want some? Stub my toe, I've done it again. Oh, sad. Oh, well. Same house, the arthritic hand as well. <laughs> Happy days. Draw a line from there, straight across to there, and you'll see it's at least 10 feet of water pouring down here. And that's why these sort of big banks or dikes are here, because if you look, that land over there, and if I come up higher on top of this, the land down in there would flood and does flood. And that's what this has been built for. I've gone to Haycam. I might possibly get another take along here. Obviously, I've got to have a throw. That may well have been the uh, pike that I lost on the spinnerbait twice. He grabbed at it and right down here close and I ran out of water. So that's why I'm not a great lure lover because I could have dropped the dead bait on the bottom, a little sprat or something, and you would have probably picked it up. But the lure, if you run out of water, you can't move it, it won't take. On again, guys. On oh, again, I just moved a little bit further down. Oh, jeez, I'm gonna go in a minute. I moved a little bit farther down. You see, I was only there. I think it's a bigger fish. I mean, this is a pretty pokey rod. Oh yeah, bigger fish altogether. Wow, just that change of lure. Oh. Is it the change of lure? I think he's absolutely digested this lure. And a short, that looks like a jumper to me. It, uh, a short, it was a short jerky with tree. I don't go down anymore, I don't think. I'm going to be in with the fish otherwise. That's nothing. That's my limit. It's definitely a wet I thought so. That's a wet arse. It was happening. Oh well, let's find out where the bank starts and finishes, eh? Don't you dare laugh. Soaking wet arse, dinging that was Christ. Bloody things I do. Trying to get you people fish. Risking life and limb. He's down there. I'll tell you what, he's going well. God, to snap a bit there. Do the bloody gardening as well. Look at it, as if I don't do enough gardening at home, I've got to start gardening here to get near the water. Well, if we lose him, we lose him. He's here. Nice jump, that was sweet. Here he comes. Pretty angry. Tune favours a brave or something in there. Fortune favours those with a long, a long handle on their net. There's a loose treble there. I don't want that. I hate nets. I hate nets of pike like this for lures. Absolutely hate it. Yeah, we know you can get rubber nets and all that, but they're still a nightmare. I'd sooner be near the water and hand lift them. He's in, boys. Oh, yeah, it's way bigger. Whew. That is just an epic. There's a lure. Just hooked on the scissors. Oh, God. What a game. Actually, I'll tell you what, it's all the 10 feet down there. 
Holy crap, it's bigger than I thought. <sighs> same swim, same swim. I feel, yes, another wet arse coming. I'm on back wine this time. Smaller fish, but he, he busted on a, a roach over there. And uh, he must have missed it. I put the plug over there, nothing, second cast, boom, he had it. There's three fish in this one area, just because I stopped and saw these little roach that were swirling on the surface, just sort of flipping on the surface. They do go well for their size. There he is, there's a jumper. He's gonna jump out. I feel a jumper. Oh, and he's off as well. No sweat, that saves an awful lot of grief with the net. Wowee. Do you know, I think three out of this one swim, I can always come back to it. So there might be a little nest of pike there. I'm gonna try down there, because I heard some sort of, I thought they were birds or ducks, but maybe they were fish. Let's move on, guys. The day has turned around big time. I've moved down, I've had to chop my way through these nettles down the bank and I've got my pliers here, not my forceps, but like pliers and cutters. I just knocked a bit of dirt there so I can tread on a flat spot and I can at least have a shot because here I've got a little bit of an overhang so I'm going to try one pass there first. I haven't seen, well one little inch long fish there and one back there but I've only ever seen that one swirl from a pike. And I'm fishing it quite jerky now. And they seem to like that, it makes it shimmer and flash. If I was on a dead bait, it's about where I'd expect to take there. Just past the front of that bush. I see a lot of mud <clears throat> down here. So I'm guessing the tide is still dropping. That's got fish written all over it, I know. If I was a pike, I'd be eating that right now. It's probably a funny action for this lure, but all I can say, the last three pike ate it doing this. Just hope there's no branches that have come off. Wow, well, I'm amazed there's not a pike under there. But there again, there's not many features here for them to, to go around. I think they just follow the shoals of bait fish. If you get a piece of weed on guys, take it off. The lure won't work properly. You can see it's just, look, where do you fish? Look at it, just miles of it. Where do you fish? If you're a local, no problem. Easy peasy, you know all the fish are. <clears throat> if somebody coming down just like me, go and buy a regular day ticket, it's pretty daunting. All I can look for is, well, roach, dimpling on the surface, telling me there's possibly bait fish there. I've seen two people all day. Yeah, it's got weed on it. I know it's got weed on it because I can see the lure wasn't working properly. Look, see, that's all it takes to put the fish off because the lure won't work properly. That cast deserves a fish crown. Oh, I did see a decent sized perch, about a pound, <clears throat> following the shad in. Biting and snapping at it, and all I did, I felt little bumps on the lure, but I didn't actually feel a pull, you know, it's like taps, if that makes sense, on the lure. Not basin taps or bath taps, no, you know, just pulls. Weed on that too. See it? Look, that's enough. That piece there is enough to miss the fishy. One more would be nice. Well, less than two would be, but I think I'd be asking a bit much. If I could walk away with four, I think I'd be more than happy because that was last fish was a nice one. There are some fingers of streamer weed just hanging like that, and the lure just catches them in the bend of the hook. <clears throat> feel happy if I could see some small fish dimply. Peaceful, my goodness me, it's peaceful. Just hear the odd train.
Right, I'm going to switch off people, see if I can get a hook up. I've moved down, cut my little swim out. I'm hooked up again, and I lost one of the first casts before this. Just looking for tiny little dimpling fish. That seems to be the only way to locate anything here. If it was ripply, I wouldn't be able to see anything at all. It's not a bad pike. It doesn't look very big because I'm way up on this bank. And uh, it's a wide angle camera. He ain't happy. <laughs> he has absolutely throated it. Now comes the dangerous part. Wow, that went swimmingly. I extended it right to the limit and I got the fish as well. Good lord, he's absolutely engulfed that. Here comes the pike police. Yes, I've got my mat, don't worry. Absolutely, just look at that guys, he's gagged on it. If you do get one that takes a hook down, you can always go in through the outside of the opercular cover and uh, unhook him that way. I've got another about, I guess, oh look, don't bite that mate. About two pounds, I just swung that one and I didn't have the camera on my head. So this is number five. Wow. Oh, here he comes, here's the old Skycopter. Ten four will go over. Six pikes so far. Over and out. Release bombs. Bombs away. Straight in his swim. It's obviously a training exercise falling up the exact path of the river. Very, very low. I don't even think that's 300 feet off the ground. In fact, I got my hair blow dried at the same time for free. A Chinook, I believe. Peace and solitude reigns again. You probably mess the bloody fishing up now, going all up the river that low, about 100 feet off the ground. It was actually, you don't realise it, but that was a guy that chartered that plane from the military especially so that he could come and see the totally awesome fishing crew in action. There was about, I think there's about 27 people on that, uh, on that uh, Chinook. All paying £150 each to watch me lose one of these lures in the bushes in a minute because I'm getting closer and closer to the other side. Come on, one more fish. I've got to get something to eat. I'll be getting dizzy spells in a minute. Two casts down that way, and I've got to go all that way back to the car now. Of course, I've now found the fish miles from the car. I had a, I'm sure I had a big bang up there, but I came back with a wee bit. felt awfully like it was a big fish that took the plug you know, took the lure and then crashed into the weed bed and, bed and dumped the hooks in the weed bed. Got it all back, but when I pulled into it, it absolutely buckled the rod right round, held it, thumped once. So I'm 99% sure it get down there. That it wasn't a snag. There's another dimple way down there, 50 yards, but I have to come back to that. And of course, this was the last cast. I did say one more last cast. And no doubt there'd be another one after this. My wrists are going to absolutely cane tonight. And I'm fishing tomorrow. I'm going to sleep in the car tonight because I've come all this way, so I couldn't possibly get up two o'clock in the morning to get down. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. That's weed. That's a jack in the margins, people, as we were talking. There you go. In the margins, and off, and away. Right, gotta get some sandwiches. It's a long walk. There we go, people. Only small, only a wee one. Bit of grass there. That's number seven. Another small one on, boys. Just by that piece of wood, just bringing the lure around the, the side there. See where the edge of the bank is. 
Oh, it's not. <laughs> what about that then? What about that? A chub on a shed and a load of weed. Well, well, well. A chub on a lure. Well, that's somewhat weird, isn't it? Well, it's not weird, but it's quite a big lure for that. Whew, I am so exhausted from all that walking and catching those pike. They didn't come on in the end. I finished up, I hooked 11 pike. I got seven, nine pounder was about the biggest one, I think. And I had that chub, so really good session in the end, but just down the road. So I'm coming down, I'm gonna throw some bread in. I've got about barely an hour or so, but something big might come up here. And who knows, it might finish the evening off for me. I'm gonna have a cook up as well. It looks pretty idyllic. The anglers have, uh, have just uh, moved from here and packed up. It might have been a decent fish there. You just absolutely never know here. Look, just break some bread up, scatter it. They will come down this ditch area as well. This is the time that they do come up on the surface. So I'm just going to throw some out there and then I'm going to go and probably have something to eat. Oh, I'll tell you what I do want to show you. Let's get that bread out. That could be working. I just want to show you these lures, the difference in the lures here. In fact, I might as well do it while I sit around and have a cup of tea. Have a coo cup. My car is all geared up for uh, an overnighter. There's no night fishing here, you can't night fish. Don't need to night fish in fairness, you don't need to. Thing is, back in the autumn like this, it gets dark earlier. So you've got to get the days in, um, it's dark in the morning. Everything's getting shorter as far as daytime fishing goes and very often you just pick a fish off the surface in the evening so this believe it or not is the equivalent of a bomb site and that's the way it is with me always always have a loaf of bread so i've got a bed sleeping bag i'll sort that out let's get a chair out and get ourselves organized so just worth mentioning i feel that lure now you can get lures i can't dig them all out with a fixed vein, here's the lure, it's a fixed vein and that drives it deep. You have a shallower one, you know, which is coming up on the surface and you can get one which is called an Abu Hilo, which has an adjustable, I've showed them before, it has an adjustable click setting on the vein at the front. The vein is what sends a plug up or down and gives it a lot of the action. But this one I've been catching on, ouch, just try to show you there. Hopefully, can you see the shape of that lip? There's no name on this one. I don't know. It's the, it's the pike lure with no name, but it's what I call a shad shape anyway. But can you see how that stepped down the actual vein? It steps down and then it has a scoop. And that, I believe, is why this one caught, because it's putting me at the right level. It's also, when you look at it like that, yeah, I'll hold it like that, about the right size of a lot of the roach that's in there. Now, the roach I see flipping on the surface are maybe one inch, something like one inch like that, just popping on the surface. They would have been spawned from fish, let's say this size, this year. They're this year's fish. These are the original roach. So that is what we call matching the hatch. But I do believe it's that sort of unusual double stepped vein, which is <laughs> bizarre. If it goes down like that, it's shallow, but if it goes that angle, it's deep, but it just seems to give it the right action. So there you go. Worth checking out, check out the veins on the front of the plugs or lures you buy before you just buy them. Don't just buy any old lure, you want to know whether it's a shallow one, medium depth, a sinker, that type of thing. Whether it goes, is a floater and goes sinking or whether it is actually a sinking lure. Ask one of the top lure shops, that's the best thing to do and they probably give you some good information. As you can see, like the inside of the car, my lure box is indeed, crank that round for you a living mess of treble hooks, traces, pliers, unhooking stuff. They are very old lures. Some of them, I've got some of the original, I mean the original big S lures. I've got a few left. Now, it seems a bit bizarre me going pike talking, but I just fish for everything, guys. I couldn't, if it was sea fishing, I was near the sea, I'd be going sea fishing. I'm going to sleep in here tonight and fingers crossed up early in the morning for a bit of fishing here. Bread is going out. I'm going down with one rod, one hook, and just see if there's anything down there. Just got 
the last knockings of a late afternoon, early evening. No wind, got to be worth a shout. Come on, let's get down there. As you can see, net, mat, bag of bread, rod reel, and an evening of late autumn, mid-autumn I suppose you call it, not even late autumn yet. And look at these flowers still out here. These ones, lovely. And our friend, the duck, featured in a previous film here. It's always, I generally I think a load of rooks come over, but I think the weather's gonna be okay for tomorrow. The cloud and that's uh, going away there. The wife said she'd have rain all day, so I've been lucky with that pike fishing. I'm just going to go down in this corner where a gentleman has packed up no more than 15 minutes ago and see if anything but anything has taken some of that bread. If he hasn't, I'm going to go back and have a cook up. And small fish, small fish just knocking the bread there. Nothing taking it off the, top, off the top here. Well, it does surprise me because generally autumn can be good, but what a pleasure to be out anyway. A good day pike fishing and the outside chance of a fish off the top. I don't see anything move. Oh, something did move there. Now, I'm sort of stuffed because I've only got um, a quiver tip rod. Alright, a little piece of bread on there and we just lob it out on that corner and wait. Well they've got little fish taking, uh, knocking the bread around there, look, you see. Let's get the bread down there with me. No toys for leaving anything behind. creep down the staging and just lob that out there and leave it. I think there's one just in here off the end of this. Draw a line for that willow. I've got no polarizing glasses, I'm just literally... Oh, 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 oh. That small fish knocking it. Now I don't mind that because I believe that attracts a bigger fish as well. So if I do get a hook up, I'm going to switch a battery off because I haven't, uh, haven't got a great deal of batteries. I I've got two other batteries and they're a bit dubious. All that, you can see my mine's over there. I keep dead still. They're knocking it all around, probably rud. And tomorrow I'm going to have a go at the, at the rud as well on the surface. I'll switch off and if I do hook something, you'll be the first to hear about it. Well, <laughs> it's gone from pike fishing to cart fishing on the top with a quiver tip rod. Talk about you couldn't make it up. I'm guessing it's a carp. What is that? Yes, yeah, a carp. Well, do you know what? Was that worth stopping off here? Absolutely. Pike and carp, two of the most iconic species we have albeit the carp's definitely a uh, predominant species. Well, well, well. I had a feeling it was just down the road. The bread up here in the channel is not, uh, not being taken. I'd say he's five pounds. I'm not sure why people don't, don't, don't fish with floating crust more. You know, it's whatever the fishery says. A loaf of bread, 49p I believe that was, maybe, maybe 59p. Fish on the end of the line, one hook, that's all it is. What a finish if I get this in. There he is. Come on, babe. He's tangled up. He's tangled. I can see it lying, laying around his daughter's tangled up. He'll probably kick off once it uh, 
untangles itself. Yeah, it's untangled itself. There we go. It's too late. It's too late. He bites the dust. There we go. Pike and carp. You can't argue with that, people. A lovely golden common. What a finish. I've been cleaning my uh, algae out of my pond. So it's a bit of a manky net now. Brilliant. A loaf of bread? Don't leave home without it. You won't see it, but it's, pretty, it's getting dark and I just I just got another car hooked up on floater. I'm assuming it's a carp, guys, anyway. It is indeed. So you'll probably get absolutely nothing of this. But there is a fish on there. So, 11 pike hooked, 7 landed, 1 chub, and maybe, maybe 2 carp. And then it's home in time for tea. Or not. <laughs> he didn't like that extra pressure, did he? Pretty sure you won't get much of this because this camera's not great in low light. But there is indeed a fish on the end. And there is now a fish in the net. Another common carp. Well, guys, I have got a floodlight, I'm not going to bother setting it up, you'll just have to take my word for it. A really frisky and very surprised common carp. Let's get him back. Great trip. People, thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Hit the subscribe button both channels. TA Fish and TA Outdoors. Hit the like button for change, try something different, and we'll see you in the next episode. The moon is a coming up as well. Mm -hmm.